Let's get it. This is Life's Essential Ingredients with Jeff and a mic, where we hope to inform, inspire, and transform lives one essential ingredient at a time. Welcome to the show. Uh, here we go again. Life's Essential Ingredients, Season 2, Episode 24, coming from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Pasha, we in Texas. We drove through Texas. Pasha was looking uh, for some big horns. I think we only found one on that trip. Uh, and I don't even know if you got to see it. But uh, good morning, everybody, and good morning to our guest, Rachel McCants. Good morning. Good morning. So glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. And you can find Rachel at rlindsayunlimited.com. And I'm going to spell it just R L I N D S A Y unlimited.com or via Instagram at rlindsayunlimited. So, first of all, about our guest, Rachel received her bachelor's degree in communication with a minor in English from the University of Texas at Arlington and is currently an author, speaker, and founder of R. Lindsay Unlimited. Rachel's mission is to encourage, inspire, and challenge ladies to discover and raise their self-worth. I love that. To not settle, love that even more, and to walk in God's will, and obviously gotta love that. Rachel has been a Christian her entire life, and in 2016, found an opportunity to strengthen her already strong faith. Rachel was diagnosed with a rapidly growing tumor in her brain, specifically her pineal gland. Rising through that challenge with the help of the Lord inspired Rachel's first book, Ladies As We Love Ourselves, a six-step program to self-worth. Rachel inspires women all over the world, and today she inspires us on life's essential ingredients. Rachel, thanks for rising to fulfill his mission and welcome to the show amen amen thank you for yes, having me yes yes we already going to drop a few amens pasha and pasha you can throw in an amen if you feel good with it amen there it is <laughs> there we go there we go uh, all right so rachel we always start with the thought of the day which is one of the highlights of the show for me uh and pasha and i picked these babies and we're 100 percent uh on every single guest like oh man that speaks to me uh, so here we go, and hopefully, I, I don't know if I, how I say this last name, I should know, but it's by Joseph Gerzone, uh, G-I-R-Z-O-N-E, and here it goes. In every age, there exist quiet heroes who, in their devotion, lay aside their own needs and comforts and consecrate their energies and talents to healing the wounds of a troubled humanity. Why would I pick that quote for you? Because you're so sweet. Um, but uh, I just believe that, well, I, I don't like to say this about myself because, you know, I was raised not to pump myself or, you know, give up too many accolades myself or, you know, it seems prideful or like you're boasting or, you know, gloating or something. But I have been told many times that I am selfless. And I give way more to others than I do for myself. And I have been working on that because you have to take care of yourself before you can truly pour out to others. And that is why I heard you mention devotion in that quote, which I really love. I have special devotion and quiet time with Jesus every morning. And I run a program called Early Mornings with a Dose of Jesus, where I ask for 10 minutes of their time. It starts at 6 a.m. Central Standard Timing. And I ask for 10 minutes, but the goal is really five minutes or less to encourage them. I give them an er encouragement. I give them an affirmation for the day. I give them a verse for the day. And then I tell in a song for the day. And I tell them to have a productive day in Jesus's name, because I really believe in that devotion and quiet time with God every morning. It's needed for me to pour out to others. Mm, 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 mm. I love it. So let's just get right into it. Uh, I'm not going to sing, but I was in the choir, which was one of the funniest stories ever. I wish I had it on film because I, yeah, I cannot sing for anything, but uh, break us something off of, of the song that you sang today. Just a little, little verse of it, if you don't mind. Well, I don't sing, 
I don't sing. I often say if I sang Beyonce, be in trouble. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, I give them a song for um, their quiet time, for them to continue their time with Christ, something that aligns with the message. And the last song, because EMDJ is on break right now, we start back actually this coming up Monday, but I feel like the last song was I Trust You by James Fortune. Um, But yes, no, I, I don't sing. One of my EMDJers is a beautiful singer and I always, you know, shout her out a little bit and I sing kitty songs sometimes because I was raised in church. So, you know, like Father Abraham and many sons, but I don't take it any further than that. All right. All right. All right. I like it. I like it. And what a great way to start the day. Uh, and speaking of starting, so what was life like just starting out for you? What was that uh, just growing up? And you can go to any piece of, of that that you choose. Um, but yeah, tell the listeners kind of how, uh, how it was for you growing up. So I will say that I feel like I had the best childhood starting out. My mom, my dad, and me, it was so much fun. And I just, I felt so loved and just the family, just, it was just the perfect childhood. And I love him dearly. And our relationship is mended now, before I say this, my dad left the family when I was five and got remarried and uh, I have two brothers uh, from him and my stepmom and you know and I love them too and that was fun but growing up like as a single child or only child at first best childhood ever and then my sister was born before my dad left Um, and now it's me my mom and my sister well it has been for the last few years and so you know our little trio was a lot of fun but even though like my mother gave us so much love and she really is the one who showed me what a true relationship with Christ looks like and the devotion with him every morning looks like. I didn't really get into it until I had the brain tumor. So going through life and everything was kind of a struggle because I've always been this happy, this energetic, this bubbly, but for a long time, it was really just a show. And my mom has looked at pictures like recently and she was just like, looking in your eyes, you really were sad. I was like, I was sad. Um, but it was an, an overall, I had a pretty good childhood. I was raised in the church. I went to uh, vacation Bible school. I was in Sunday school. I was in Awana. I don't know if y'all know Awana. Approved workmen are not ashamed. It's a, a program for children uh, growing up, memorizing verses and okay. different things, a lot of activities. I went to Christian summer had me in everything religion or you know everything that you can think of related to church and Jesus and everything but for some reason I I wasn't holding on to it I guess I was desensitized uh growing up in the same church and y'all believe you shocked when I tell you what church I grew up in (laughs) it's Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship but when um I was younger when Pastor Evans would get on stage I would go to sleep It just was not intriguing for me, but now I am back home at OCBF uh, and I just hold on to everything he says, but like growing up and just trying to find my footing and my purpose, because for the longest, I really felt like I did not have a purpose and I didn't know what it was. I did graduate from college by the grace of God. Uh, I started my career in television in the sales department. I was a sales assistant. And then I went to corporate where I organized commercial spots. And then I um, ended up in the billing department. And this is where I really realized that Rachel does not belong in corporate. And so I ended up back in retail, which was the best decision ever. And God knew what he was doing in this position. Uh, And this is where the brain tumor was discovered. And it was a Canadian company. So they just took so much care of me. So such good care of me. So I can, I don't know. But it was, it was a struggle, but a blessing of a struggle of what I went through growing up, because if I hadn't gone through it, I would not be where I am today. And I am so thankful for my foundation. Mm. Yeah. Well, man, you, you took us, uh, everywhere and then some on that, but I was taking a, a bunch of notes, uh, and, and first thing, yeah, it's just crazy how life works out. You know, we, we think that we have a plan, uh, of what we're going to do. Um, and then, uh, normally it's, it's not going to work out. And so having plan B, C, D, E, uh, F and G, uh, is so important. And then to have the flexibility, uh, to be able to, uh, just pivot 
you know, and say, all right, well, let me get into the next thing. And then as we mature to find, you know, our self-worth uh, and our values to be able to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do to to live my purpose. And it sounds like you've found a way to have a, a great routine for yourself and then to share that purpose uh, with your business and your book. Uh, and so congrats on that. But I want to, I want to go back uh, a little bit because one of the things, you know, that you are doing to help ladies is to discover their self-worth. So what would be some ways that you do that? I know obviously you use religion, um, but in your book, you know, you, you have a six step program, but if you were to meet somebody uh, today, you're in a, going to have some coffee and uh, you're meeting a potential client and you can just tell they're, they're just kind of faking it a little bit and they're struggling. Uh, what would be one or two things right out of the gate that would help that person um, take action towards developing a self-worth? Great question. And it, you already said it first or said it right. That is my first step with anything. My first step is to turn to God. So yes, but these six steps that I use to regain my true identity and self-worth, because I didn't realize how shallow I actually was until I was bald twice. One of my brothers is a photographer and he got this really good pick. Um, but I didn't realize, um, how shallow I was. And so the six steps are first turn to God. And that's my first step in any and everything. And you can ask me about Rachel, how do you tie your shoe? First, you pray about it and tie your shoe. Um, okay. So, uh, the second step is forgiveness, figure out where you're lacking forgiveness in your life, because there is a lot of time. There are a lot of times that we think we have moved on from a situation, but we have to forgive. And in the book, I actually talk about my dad. Um, and how I had to forgive him because how I was holding on to what I was holding on to was affecting me. It wasn't affecting him. Yeah, he didn't like that I was upset, but it was affecting Rachel and how I viewed a lot of things in life. The third step is encourage. No, the third step is knowing yourself, know your strengths, know your weaknesses, because a lot of times we are trying to strengthen our weaknesses and that at best can be mediocre. We got to focus on strengthening our strengths so we can excel and, you know, be who God has called us to be. And then four is affirmations. I believe in affirmations. I do affirmations every morning. The majority of them are Bible verses, uh, but you got to affirm yourself. You know who you are now after step three. So step four is affirming who you are and who God has called you to be. Step five is encourage others and volunteer. Because when we encourage and uplift others, we really feel better. We are designed to serve. And encouraging is an area of serving, I believe. My sister is so brilliant at encouraging others that she sees. Like if she sees somebody that she likes their shirt or their dress or whatever, she really prides herself in telling them so, so they feel good or have like a better day. Like, I like your outfit today. That looks good. You know, just something small like that. Number six. Okay. So my bookends, my first one and my sixth one, y'all, let me let you know. They are just near and dear. All the steps are, but no internet, Wi-Fi. No problem. So you were at just finishing uh, the encourage others and then, um, you were heading into number six. Yes, number six, my bookends. So the first one and the sixth one are my faves. I mean, all of them are near and dear to my heart, but the first and the sixth, the sixth is exercise. We got to be active. We got to be in motion. Our bodies were designed to move, not be still or stagnant. And so I believe exercising and as we get our blood flowing and as we continue to stay healthy or get healthy and get in the exercise routine, that really just helps your overall mindset and self-worth. You're valuing yourself. And that's also a part of self-care. Mm -hmm. Is that stuff that you do like locally? Do you have uh, like a kind of a support group, uh, exercise group that's part of what you offer to your clients that are local? Not yet, but you hear the yet. So our Lindsay Unlimited is an umbrella company. So ladies, as we love ourselves, the book, it came out of nowhere. I was really working on plays and the plays are called Ladies As We Wait. 
And there's also a Ladies As We Wait, W-E-I-G-H-T. I'm a certified Zumba instructor. So I believe in working out. I really do. I'm a little bit of a workout fanatic. And when I was running the showroom, part of my job description was to build relationships with the fitness community around us. So I had a whole bunch of free exercises that I was enjoying. But not yet. So I'm working on a Zumba class or something. We'll see. Uh, that's good. I like it. So, Rachel, I got to, you know, I'm always looking at the background when we're on a Zoom. As you can tell, mine's a mess. That's why it's blurred out. But I noticed you have a sign back there. And uh, my wife is a sign fanatic. We got one wall in our dining area. It's got about 100 signs. But I love that sign I see behind you where it says she believed she could. So she did. Can you kind of break us down what that means to you? Ah, it means so much. And it's so interesting that you brought that up because someone just gave me a bag yesterday with that on it. And I was like, you will not believe that that is on my wall. Um, I believe that if you believe it, kind of like affirmations, telling yourself over and over again, you can achieve it. But I also go back to Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But I believe if you want something and it's in your heart to do, do it. And, you know, quote that comes to my mind with that is, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? I love it. I love it. And I know one of the things that you talk about with your clients and on your website um, uh, in helping you, you know, feel like you can't fail it is the importance of having a tribe. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, get into that and, and why it's so important. I believe it's important. So first and foremost, the church is not a building. The church are us, the people. And so I believe that God created us to have a relationship with people. And I believe you need the right people in your community. And so people, we all need a community to keep us strong. It takes a village. We can't do this on our own. We are stronger in numbers. And that is what EMDJ is also for, because we have friendly Fridays on Fridays, and that's when everybody talks Monday through Friday, well, Monday through Thursday, I only talk, but on Fridays, everybody talks if they want to participate in friendly Fridays, it's optional, you can definitely just join EMDJ and join Monday through Friday, and not say anything and enjoy the encouragement and go on about your day. But on friendly Fridays, we all chip in and talk about our week. We pick a topic a week or EMDJ is a topic a week. And we'll talk about how you did that week with the topic. Like what happened uh, when you trusted God more this week? Or like, did you feel a difference? And lately we have an accountability part of the community, which is our goals. We pick a goal for the three months and we work on that goal for the three months. So you pick a goal, break it down for three months of work that you need to do to achieve this goal. And we keep each other accountable. And so I really do believe in a tribe and a community it's needed. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I love that accountability piece. You know, it's interesting. We're C4 leaders is a nonprofit, you know, uh, that Mike and I are part of, and we're trying to do similar work. Uh, and we're definitely believers, but uh, we don't, that's not at the forefront of what we're doing. Uh, we use pizza now to, to kind of bring people together and do a lot of the same things that you're doing. And we're in the stage right now where we're trying to, with COVID hopefully quieting down, uh, we're going to have this, this feed the starter challenge is what we're calling it. And it's uh, basically feeding the starter. Uh, we wrote a children's book called We Rise Together. It's part of a series, the Pizza Day series, and then we uh, the the Feed the Starter Challenge is about trying to help people develop healthy habits, uh, and we're going to work with families, teams, schools, uh, classrooms, you know, whatever it is, and just like you, you know, what can we do to build in some encouragement, uh, some accountability, and allow people to focus on their strengths and developing those strengths in order to what we would call share their gift. Uh, and we really are going to focus uh, on youth and families 
Uh, and so we're just about ready to, to launch this uh, and excited. And then just hearing you, you know, doing your work uh, gets me fired up because that's just what the world needs, you know, is, is all people to have a tribe and feel like they have somewhere to go to be seen uh, and to see others, to be heard and to, to listen to others. Uh, and so, yeah, congrats on, on doing all that work. Um, I do want to get into a word that the older I get, the more I realize we kind of just go over like important words and don't really kind of dive deep into them. Um, and I, we've, this word has come up several times, but it's encouragement. You know, and uh, and I know you were given the example of your sister, you know, not being afraid to let people know that she uh, appreciates, you know, what they're doing and to give them some words of encouragement. Um, but I guess I'm I'm focusing on youth who perhaps don't have that self-awareness yet, um, perhaps uh, are just uh, a, a show kind of what you were doing early on in your life of just kind of going through the motions a little bit, how, how would you guide your clients or someone to get into that space to be an encourager uh, and to just have that, that lens? That is a great question. And it is so interesting because people keep trying to pull me to the youth. So I think it's so interesting that that is where y'all are at. Um, and I feel like God is just like, this is where you're headed because I keep getting the message that you got to get them before they get to where I am or the people, you know, that I encourage are now. And so my encouragement for someone else to get into that headspace uh, is to find, or at the end of each day, pick three things that you are grateful for during that day what happened to be grateful for? It could be as small as, you know, I didn't butt my knee on a, the counter or something, you know, like I didn't hurt myself or, you know, I had water to drink today. I had food to drink today. So like, cause I know it's hard for a lot of people to be grateful, but until you're grateful, it's really hard to encourage others. But if it is hard sometimes for you to be thankful first, sometimes you can just, if somebody's wearing your favorite color, I like that color that you have on today. It's working for you. You can just make up crazy things to encourage people for. You'll be surprised what like encourages them. And then when that encourages them, it kind of sparks in you. And I feel like that is like something that just internally works through. But I feel like honestly, it works from the inside out. And if you can't find anything to be grateful for, it's going to be very hard for you to encourage and be grateful for something else for someone else. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Really good tips. And uh, we got a lot of similarities. You know, our nonprofit is C4 Leaders. And when you said uh, sparks in you, that's what we'd call lighten the fuse. You know, C4 is an explosive. And so lighten the fuse is about goal setting and then taking action towards helping yourself and others uh, kind of light the fuse of each other. Uh, man, I love it. I love it. Um, what else do we got? So what would you know this show is called life's essential ingredients and i know you went over your your six steps and i know your mornings uh, are huge but that's uh let's get into you're just you're starting off bad and you're 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 not able to to get into that space where you need to go to where do you go uh, and how do you kind of reset yourself um when you're struggling Thank you so much. Such a good question. And it's so funny because I go through this often and I say go through this, but I share with people often that I, a lot of times wake up with anxious thoughts, negative thoughts. The first thing in my head is often negative. And until I call on Jesus for me, um, does anything change for me? But recently when like a few weeks ago, I woke up and I was in a mood or I felt heavy and even praying and calling on talking to him about it, it wasn't working for me. And it wasn't until I feel like uh, the Holy Spirit told me to um, practice what you teach. And so I had to go through thankful things, things that I was thankful for. And it wasn't until I was completely thankful. I did my affirmations and I actually was in my Bible that it changed for me. But it was a whole mindset change for me. I had to really dig deep 
and just be thankful because it's so easy to dwell on the negative. Our minds naturally go to the negative and we have to train our minds not to. But I go through that almost every morning with anxiety and negativity. Mm-hmm. Man, I appreciate you sharing that in uh, uh, an episode that uh, actually drops today for uh, uh, us. Um, we had the Dopamine Nation was a book uh, written by uh, Dr. Anna Lemke. And one of the first things that I, I really took uh, a lot from recording that episode, um, but she just said, yeah, we, we kind of think that we should be happy. You know, and people think that life is, is um, that's where we should be experiencing pleasure more often than not. And uh, she's just like, well, no, you know, that's not true. Life is hard. You know, and and we need to turn to things that are healthy for us as opposed to, you know, Internet and porn and other addictions that we turn to when we're feeling less than. Um, And in listening to you, you know, you perhaps wake up, you know, less than might be a little bit strong, but but negative thoughts, you know, and not not feeling uh, yourself or that is your true self. You know, I'm, I'm someone that's, that's, you know, I need to get going uh, a little bit, but then I love, and what I took down and, and wrote is trust the process, you know, and you have created a process for yourself to know, all right, maybe it's only step one that I need and boom, now I'm, that negativity is gone or wait a second, man, today is even rougher for some reason. And I got to get to step four to start kind of feeling like I can be my true self and bring my best self. Um, And that's what I hope the listeners will take is find your process, you know, and figure out what that is for you. And if you don't have one, obviously reach out to Rachel McCants. Uh, Again, rlindsayunlimited.com. She's been figuring out. She's been going through life. She shared her story, struggling to figure out who she was. Unfortunately, had a brain tumor that uh, uh, knocked her alive uh, and here she is now sharing her gift Um, and so we're going to just jump you know right to the end of this thing we always end with this quote that we love the only thing you take with you when you're gone is what you leave uh, behind so let's fast forward you're a young woman let's fast forward 60 years for you and you're on your deathbed and you're surrounded by uh, a bunch of clients that you have have just loved on uh, and, and helped them rise up. Uh, you're surrounded by your family and your loved ones. Uh, what is it you want them to take from you? I just want them to have the internal joy of Jesus. That's what I want everybody to get from me. I just want, and I'm thankful that I am called a light. Just about anywhere I go, I end up with the nickname Sunshine. And so I just want them to take that with them. I want them to always have sunshine, but just the light of Christ. Mm, mm, mm. I love it. Pashito, what do you got? Wow, Rachel, thank you. The positive vibes and the positive energy coming from you is very infectious, just like your great smile. Keep doing great works. We appreciate it. And thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, Rachel, any closing? Yeah, any closing comments at all? Um, I am here to help y'all with C4 if you're ever into it. I am happy to do morning routines. I also do morning routines and help people create the routines for themselves, mm-hmm. as you mentioned. So I am just here to serve and whatever I can do for you in those areas, I am happy to assist. Nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. You find her, Rachel McCants at rlindsayunlimited.com, doing great things to help us all uh, live our best life. Uh, and with that, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Life's Essential Ingredients. Pashito, you know how we do it, baby, when we're done. Boom, baby, that just happened. We out. <laughs>